Let's use this definition. The process of effectively addressing an audience. And I want to highlight the word process because this class focuses on the process. The reading that you have assigned that is due tomorrow lays out the nine-step process of public speaking. So in addition to those nine steps that are in the textbook, there are some, some other, there's some other material that, that goes into this process, including the ability to think clearly. You need to make sure that if you're going to be an effective public communicator, that you can, in fact, think clearly about your topic, about your structure, about your speech, about your audience, about anything and everything that goes into, goes into your speech. It also involves planning strategies. This class is, is all about preparation. So we're walking through how you prepare to speak and to speak clearly, to speak effectively. So you need to have a good strategy. You need to think through how you're planning out your speech. Third, gathering materials. If you are going to be an effective speaker, you have to learn how to do good research, how to gather not just an abundance of material, but the right material, the right sources, the right papers and, and books and articles, websites. Fourth, you got to understand your audience. If, if you're going to speak well, part of speaking well is, is learning how to speak in such a way that your audience connects with you. And you don't, that, that comes naturally for some, but for others, it, it takes a lot of work. You have to really work to learn your audience, to, to learn the generation that you're speaking to, to, to learn about the culture that you're addressing. And it also involves practicing. Uh, you don't want to get up and just kind of wing it. Even though I'm teaching probably four hours a day, depending on the day, give or take, like today is my busiest day. I'm in the classroom or chapel from 8 to 11.30 and then from 2 to 5, basically. And that, that, that's pretty much my entire day on Tuesday. I still try to make sure that even if it's a lesson I've taught four, five, six times, that beforehand, I open up my notes, I'll even open up my PowerPoint and click through it as I kind of walk through it. Either read through or kind of do a mock teaching session. So even though I've taught this class, six, I'm on my seventh and eighth time teaching this class, I still will walk through my notes beforehand. So I came in a little bit earlier this morning and started walking through these notes a little bit. You never get to a point where you don't need to practice. I don't need to practice as much as I did when I was your age but I still need to kind of look through what I'm saying. We also need to consider ethics. We'll have an entire day where we focus on ethics. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what we need to consider, what's important ethically if we're going to be public speakers, but more specifically in a Christian context. We, we would hope this would be the case for anybody who's speaking in a public setting, but even more so for Bible-believing Christians. Th there are some ethical expectations that we have when we stand up in front of our brothers and sisters or in front of a non-Christian crowd and say something. So those are some other elements that will go into the process of public speaking that helps you and I more effectively address an audience. What does it take to be a good public speaker? Well, it takes at least two things. Number one, it takes some basic common conversational skills. So some, some basic things that you observe. They don't talk in the same tone and pitch of their voice the whole time. They inflect. They'll, they'll get softer. They'll look you in the eye. They'll breathe. Okay, it's not all about them. They make it about the other participant. They, they do good audience analysis, we could call it. There's a buzzword in our culture, and I think it's, I think it's legitimate, but if you, if you do kind of a basic study of, of preachers today and those who are believed to be effective teachers and communicators, you often hear the word authentic. We just want our preacher to be authentic. 
We want our preacher to be real. We want our preacher to be conversational. And so if you guys are going to be good, effective communicators, it, it takes you learning to be conversational. So taking some of those basic conversational skills that you use in a one-on-one -on -one setting when you're sitting over in the student center or in the dorm lobby or in the cafeteria or wherever you might be, taking some of those basic conversational skills and then amplifying them when you're up here or when you're on the stage in chapel or when you're in front of your church or your youth group or whatever, whatever situation you might find yourself communicating. So let's talk, take a look at a couple of those. One basic conversational skill that you need is organized thoughts. This is what Ian was talking about. People who know when to stop. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody who doesn't? And they just drone on and on and on and on and on. And you're like, okay, we started over here. Now we ended up over here. And then here, we made it back to here, but then we jumped over here. And we ended up all over the place. And we have no idea really what he was talking about or what she was talking about. So it starts by being able to organize your thoughts. And you try to do this when you're in conversation. You try to think through kind of spontaneously in an impromptu fashion, here's what I want to say. And you try to get from A to B. You do this even in conversation. Secondly, you got to learn to adapt to your audience as well you kind of pay attention to the signals, the cues that they're giving you. Let's be honest, we've all been in conversations when we're pouring our heart out and the person listening, we find out, isn't really listening. You know, they're kind of like, they're wandering off, they, they check out, and you realize it. So what do you have to do in that situation? You got to adapt it. You may have to refine matters. So you're watching for feedback, and let's say Michael and I are having a conversation, and Michael gives me kind of a furrowed brow look. What does that tell me? He's not getting this. So what are my options? Stop talking, keep on rambling, or refine what I'm saying. Explain what I've just said in a different way in hopes that maybe Michael will get it that time assuming that, that I have communicated ineffectively the first time through. So I just change what I'm saying, the way I'm saying it, in hopes that Michael's expression goes from to, oh, I got it now. So there's some basic common conversational skills that you need to use when you're up here. One of, one of the challenging aspects of public speaking is learning how to adapt to, to your audience and how to pay attention to their verbal and nonverbal, excuse me, their, their nonverbal feedback. Because what we tend to do when we sit is communicate something that we're not thinking. We, we, will, we will do this later in class, like significantly down the semester, where I will mimic what you guys do. So when you are sitting, what, what's the common posture that students take? What are some common, common sitting techniques in classroom? How many of you sit like this? Oh, that's good. Anybody do that in class? No, the answer is no. That, that doesn't happen. No student sits that way. Here's how students tend to, to sit in class. or I don't have my phone. That, that, that's the typical way that students respond. Now, it's possible that a student sitting that way, minus the phone aspect, is actually paying attention. I mean, it's very possible someone is sitting like this and totally checked in. But what does it communicate to the person speaking? I am so bored with you right now. When is this class going to be over? It is, it is very uncommon for a, for a student to sit and give good, honest feedback. Now, I've got to the point where I can kind of read, usually based on eye contact, other aspects of your face, 
it's difficult to get your face to lie. We can get other parts of, of our, our communication to lie. We can get our voice to lie. We can get our eyes to lie. We can get our posture to lie. It's very difficult to get your face to lie. So you, you kind of learn to watch people's faces. And so what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is learning to adapt to your audience when you're speaking can be a challenge because your audience may not be saying what you think they're saying with their posture, the way that they're sitting. But you got to learn to pick up on the nuances. So is half the audience making eye contact? If you got half of them, that probably means most of them are getting it. 